Hey guys, this is Scott. We're back on the Panasonic CT101. I'm sure some of you thought you wouldn't be seeing this again so quick, but um, thanks to Joe Earn One, Mr. John, down in Arkansas, uh, I was able to find the service data for this television. <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding you, it was there was a lot of response to the, the last video I did on this little TV and I hadn't had that video uploaded very long at all and old John he watched it and uh, before I could even get a chance to get on a computer and, and look for this service data he had a link to it so for 13 bucks I was able to get online and find the exact service manual data for that particular little set and so I, I bought it and I've, I've got it printed off now and we have a little bit more information to go on to try to repair this TV. Um, and what's kind of interesting to note about this is uh, just looking at this, this data reinforces to me that this is actually a TV. And what I mean by that is on occasion I, I tend to look at this as a toy and not really a, a serious piece of electronic equipment, but uh, just looking at some of the data on here, you know, this is this is just a, a regular television set. It's it, it's just really small, and uh, it's kind of interesting in how it's designed. And we'll we'll take a look at that. And the other thing uh, I wanted to point out is I think I'm a junk collector. I think he asked the question. Uh, what I thought the KV was on that little uh, second anode lead that goes to this little color CRT. And I responded by, I have no idea, but uh, with this data, we can actually uh, see right here. Uh, it's 9.5 KV, plus or minus um, 500, 500 volts. So, um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of voltage going through this little thing, so it, it's to be respected, uh, just like any other of the uh, 50s black and white sets that I that I work on. Uh, you know, they're around 10 or 11 kV, sometimes 11 and a half, depending on the size of the tube. So it's it's packing a pretty good little punch. Um, you know, the the big 25 inch, 26 inch, 27 inch color tubes. You know they're they're up at the 25 kV range, but this is still still packing some pretty good voltage. So um, service data is pretty pretty straightforward, like any other service data or service manual you'd find for a TV. It it outlines all the controls. It gives um, disassembly instructions. And right there, that little board that we were looking at last time, uh, you can see that Panasonic calls it the P board. And it, it gives you all the, the information that you need to do an alignment. And, uh, you know, describes where all the parts are, more adjustment and waveforms. Um, talks about uh, color purity adjustments and convergence adjustments okay just like you would do on any other color TV and then uh, it gives us conductor views which is really really great uh, because this TV has a lot of ICs in it okay and the more I've studied this um, there are quite a few ICs in here, a lot more than I would think from a 1985, 86 uh, product. But the good news is it gives you the pinout voltages of what you should see. And so it gives you all that for all the boards. Uh, tuner schematic. And uh, let's see, this is the... Not sure what this one is, but this is the biggie. It's the whole schematic diagram for the entire set. And then uh, parts location. 
So lots of, um, oh, and the parts list, just like you would expect. Each individual part. And gives all the capacitors, all the resistors, coils, transformers. And then it uh, gives a listing of all the diodes. A lot of diodes in this set. And then there's the uh, IC listings and transistors. So, anyway, the, um, the main information that we're interested in is to troubleshoot this TV is um, the total TV schematic, which I've blown up because it's a lot easier for me to see. And if you remember the last time we were working on this TV, we were, we were operating blind and we were working on a resistor network located right here on the P board. And taking a further look at that, of course, this is the this is the wall wart here, the schematic for the wall wart. You can see the bridge rectifier in there. And the wall wart just basically takes AC and converts it to AC. And then it has a connection point right here. I hope you can see that DC power terminal input. And then, as I suspected, th there's two different ways you can use batteries in this set. There's, an, there's a dry cell holder, which I have, and then there's a rechargeable unit that came with the set. And I do not have that, and I doubt that if I had the original, it would work anyway. Uh, so there was different two different ways you could you could charge and you could you could recharge this Set this to recharge while you weren't watching the TV using the wall wart and so here is that Resistor network where if you were call it had a resistor fall out in my hand and It looks like that looks like what that was designed to do is and I'm not a hundred percent sure but it looks like some sort of a drain for when this um, this became fully charged that's what it looks like to me I'm not quite sure of that but it, it doesn't really matter um, I just want to get an understanding of what this board is and basically it's just all of this here is the power supply for the television set and then there's a pin out here um, that supplies different voltages you can see it's transform there's a transformer here there's some diodes here this there's one IC on this board and it looks like a current limiter uh, for when the the sets first turned on to kind of allow for a soft start so this is very much <clears throat> like what you would see in today's modern TVs on a switch mode power supply although it's it's able to do AC and DC which is different but the end result of what this board is going to do is provide different voltages on those pins that and then those voltages go out into and supply voltage to different boards on the set okay so for us today, for, for troubleshooting purposes, I think the first thing we're going to do is, you can see here, I've just totally detached this battery uh, part from the circuit. We don't need that. The set will operate without that plugged in. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on is right here on this connection right here. This is where those pinouts are. And if you go back to our trace examples, there's the P board, okay? And then there's those pinouts. And the first thing I'm gonna do is check for the voltages on those pins. And if we're getting the voltages that we, we should see off of these pins, then I know that everything else um, from the line back, or from here back, is more than likely okay. And so then 
what we'll need to do is if we get voltages that don't look right here, we'll have to come back and understand where this where these wires go and what they're supplying and do we have um, or if the, if the voltages are good coming out of here then um, we're going to have to try to figure out <clears throat> what's going on on these other boards and then there's a hole is get the meter out and fire this thing up and s see what kind of readings we're getting right here Okay guys, we're going to start by doing our voltage checks on this P board from right to left. Here's the meter um, and we'll just go through here and see if we can uh, verify our voltages are, are correct. So on pin 1 we should, we should have nothing that should be ground. On pin 2 it says we should have 11 volts. And we've got 11.06, so that's right. On the third pin, we should get 8.4 volts. And we got 8.37, so we're good there. Fourth pin, we should get 5.3 volts. And we got 5.26. And on the fifth pin, we should get 4.8 volts. And we've got 4.78, so we're good there. And then these next two pins should be ground. Um, and that's ground there. Whoa. Whoa, wait a minute here. Did you guys hear that? What did I do there? That speaker just came on. What, what's going on here? Let's see if I can do that. We're getting a raster, guys. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're getting a raster. And sound. Wow. I think we're on to something, guys. That is pin one, two, three, that's pin six across. That's a ground point. There's a ground point right here and right there. It's like that's got a cold solder joint, fellas. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera or not, but That is interesting. Um, I must be grounding this out by putting this meter probe on there. I mean, I they always say you should do that when you're testing these pins on LCD TVs. Um, but that's uh, that's real interesting. Let's try that again. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do is, obviously something's going on with that pen, and what I want to do is take a look on the schematic and, and see what's going on with that. I'm kind of thinking now that we've got a bad solder joint right here, cold solder joint right here, or we could have a bad connection. I think that's right. Am I looking at this right? We're grounding this out. Um... We're grounding this out, and it's it's making continuity to ground. We're not shorting it out. We're we're grounding it. So I'm gonna ha I'm gonna take a look at this. We'll take a look at this, and and maybe we'll try to touch up the solder on this point right here and see if that has any impact. That that's a ground point there. That it looks like that may be suspect too. So. Let me check into this a little bit more, guys. Okay, guys. Um, here, I know you couldn't see it on that last segment, but here is the pin right here that I was touching with the probe that was, it, it's tied to this ground point right here. And by touching this pin right here, um, that's how we were, we were getting that to, to fire. 
and if you turn it around from the other side and take a look at it that would be um, this pin right here so what is that pin and what does it do well here on the schematic let me get my bearings here um, that is actually not pin 2 it's pin 7 right here and you can see it, it comes off of that IC and that is um, um, the discriminator and the sink and then it comes over here and it connects and it goes on up here and provides a sync signal into um, that I think this is an IC as well and then it comes off and feeds other parts and goes on into the to the rest of the circuitry but I think what we've got going on here is is that it's it's not grounding itself here is that right am I looking at that right yeah right here so I think I think I've got a connection issue right here so I'm going to fire up the old soldering iron here and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to touch up touch up this point right here I'm going to remove all that solder clean it real good and uh, I'm going to remove the solder here too and then and then resolder it and we'll see what happens okay so I'll be right back after I get that done that's going to that is so small that I'm not going to be able to do that and film that at the same time. I'll have to uh, get it under the magnifier and uh, delicately deal with that solder job. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm doing a little more work here on the Panasonic CT101. Um, I touched up the solder pin that are the uh, contact pin that I was showing you that I could short out and get the set to run and also did some more tracing on the schematic I'll show you here in a second and now I've got the set running um, we've got sound got sound control got picture but you can see I've got a uh, a bar right through the middle of the screen which is kind of concerning um, an indication of a bad cap somewhere but I'm having a little bit of trouble figuring out where it is <clears throat> the uh, color on the screen looks really really washed out on the camera here um, but it's really really bright and, and great color <clears throat> in person so uh, that's kind of misleading to you on this video. So going back to the schematic, I think the last time I left off, I was showing you um, that I thought it was this pin on the schematic. It's actually pin two on the actual P board, um, and on the schematic, it's a little bit different. So I was fooled there for a while. On this is the pin that I could actually touch with the multimeter and get the set to run. So if you follow it back to the P board, it goes through this resistor R202, which is a 1K. It checks right on. And then it goes up and it comes over and it goes to this cap C12, which is a 0.1. Um, and that's a surface mount capacitor right there, very small. And I don't really have a way to check that that cap, although it does have resistance through it. And then it comes in here and it connects to the um, uh, the power switch. Okay, so going the other way in the schematic, you can follow it up, and it comes up. And it goes around, 
here and it comes up and it goes to pin number three on the A2 connector which the A2 connector connects to what is known as the U-board okay this is the schematic for the U-board and the U-board is this circuit board right here that just kind of lays in the set vertically and so come on camera pin 3 comes out comes down comes around it goes through capacitor 205 which is a 0 0.01 cap and it goes to ground and then it connects to pin 23 of this IC right here and this IC basically contains the um, IF stage, the video detector, the AFC, AGC and the FM detector and this particular pin goes down and goes through the sound amp and then it comes out of pin 4 and on around so what I did was um, if you come to the or what I'm doing now if you come to the trace schematic for the U-board okay it gives me all the vo voltages for IC 101 which is the main IC on this board and that happens to be located right here okay so this is pin 1 there's 24 pins on this IC and goes up this is pin 12 and then over here is pin 13 and all the way down to 24 so what I'm doing is I like touch pin 1 you can see there I'm getting 3.2 volts 3.28 volts and I'm supposed to be getting 3.3 so keep your eye on the meter I'm going to touch pin 2 and I should be getting 1.8 volts and so on so I've got 24 voltages to take off of this IC and so what I'm going to try to do here is see if I'm getting any bad readings um, and for instance that pen 23 should read 1.8 volts I can touch pen 3 and we're in fact getting 1.8 volts but on the outside on the other side of that for pen 4 pen 4 we're supposed to get 1.3 volts so let's go up here to one, two, three, four. See if I can do this and do the camera at the same time. Getting 1.26 volts. So voltages on this IC from the line that we came down appear to be okay. But what I'm curious about is if all the voltages on this IC are operating correctly and if there's any of these surface mount capacitors that are associated with this that could be causing um, this problem. So that's where I'm at. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the cabinet. Um, the other thing to note is uh, I went online and I can find this IC if this IC is in fact bad. I can order it. It's like five or six bucks. It's, it's not a big deal. The other thing that I'm going to do is order up some of these surface mount capacitors. I don't have any right now. I don't use these very often. About the only time I ever use the surface mount stuff is working on, a, on an LCD TV, which I don't work on too much. But um, the other thing I'm going to be looking for is a power regulator. 
uh, bad capacitor, something that could be causing this fault that I'm having on the screen. It's just basically a split screen. Um, and at times it corrects itself, and then other times it doesn't. So I'm, what I'm going to do is put it back in the case and put um, a, a direct signal into it. Right now I'm just doing a broadcast over the blonder tongue. And I want to see what kind of results I get with that. And then um, continue and finish these. Before I put it back in, I'll finish doing all the voltages here and make note of that. And uh, see if I can figure out something that may be going on um, with this set. Okay, so we're not there yet, but I think I'm close to figuring out what's wrong with this thing. And if I keep at it enough, I think I might be able to get it fixed. So stay tuned. All right, thanks for watching, guys.